Welcome to the 2024 Monaco Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sangan and I'm alone today as HX unfortunately caught a cold and I just caught uh I just beat my sickness, my own sickness. So yeah, my voice isn't the best. I apologize and I try my best to uh do uh, the best video as I could possibly do. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna move to the predictions themselves. It's gonna be a, a fairly quick video as the race itself wasn't interesting apart from the result, which obviously uh, made it exciting for some fans. Uh, when it comes to well, uh, Grand Prix itself, uh, we kind of knew it was uh, all about qualifying. Qualifying is the main thing, and yeah, uh, the race itself isn't that exciting in itself. Uh, basically, whatever qualify results. <clears throat> Um, sad the grid, uh, that's pretty much what we get in the results, and it's, it's exactly what happened because in yeah, the, the top 10 that we got from qualifying was the exact same top 10 we got in the race itself. So, yeah, no overtakes up there for overtakes in the entire well, in the entire race in total, which is well, not the greatest thing. Uh, obviously, with the red flag at the start, kind of ruined all the strategies. Uh, let's start with qualifying. Obviously, the big shocks in Q1. Perez being 18th out qualified by Logan Sargent, and yeah, uh, 18th out in Q1 in a Red Bull. Not the greatest look. As well as Alonso in B16, I think, out qualified by Stroll again, uh, the third time in a row, I think. Yeah, not looking very good for uh, Fernando there. Uh, yeah, both big shocks out in Q1. As it was very, very close though, like uh, from P1 to P, P uh, sorry, P18, it was like just over half a second, I think, in Q1. So, yeah, close margins there. We also see Sowers being quite off the pace. Um, talking about Q2, uh, obviously had both Hasses out, uh, as well as uh, drivers like Ricardo, obviously, who is meant to be good at this track, but yeah, Yuki just put like four tests up in, on his hand, so uh, the greatest look for Daniel uh, once again this season. And yeah, I think the stroll was out as well, all in P11. Alpine has shown a great pace during qualifying, especially Pierre Gasly as he got P5 in Q2. That was very impressive. Um, yeah, moving on to Q3. Getting you already that it was going to be very close between the top three teams. It ended up being, well, <laughs> Sorry, it ended up being a uh, pretty, pretty smooth pole position for Charles Leclerc. Uh, it was uh, over a ten, ten and a half of seconds uh, ahead of Piastri in P2. Very good pole point from Oscar as well, um, who didn't have the greatest laps ever. So, yeah, um, McLaren, in terms of the sectors, if they would put it the uh the pretty fastest sectors of the session for them they would actually get pole position ahead of charles so yeah could be that the mccarras just couldn't get the lap together and charles could so great job from him obviously uh, p3 carlos struggled the entire weekend up until q3 so a good job from him to get p3 um uh, p4 lando so uh, mccarran 2-4 uh, for one free so top four full of McLaren and Ferraris, uh, just like the old days, and that's what we like to see in the Red Bull domination era. P5 was George Russell, uh, my most impressive driver, uh, for the predictions, obviously. Uh, he was extremely close to being P3, which would ultimately give him the podium, the first podium up for Mercedes since I think, uh, well, it's been a long time since Mercedes got a podium. I think US, no, actually, no. US Grand Prix was was this qualification for Lewis. So the Grand Prix before that, before that Mexican Grand Prix 2023 was the last Mercedes podium, I think. So but yeah, uh, fortunate for them. It's P6, only P6, Max Verstappen, after getting seven straight pulls, uh, straight pole positions uh, the start of the season. He only got P6 in Monaco. Uh, yeah, wasn't the greatest lap and just, yeah, couldn't get the lap together with the car. That was obviously not very suited for the track. As yeah, we saw Perez out in Q1, so obviously Red Bull wasn't the favorites this weekend. Uh, yeah, uh, P7 Lewis, uh, <laughs> qualifying, but kind of underwhelming, uh, considering where he was during practice and Q1 and Q2. 
Same way, yeah. Unfortunately for Lewis, only P7 and qualified by George once again. P8, do a very good job from Yuki Sonoda once again. Uh, P9, very notable mention, Alex Alban, one of the best drives this weekend. And P10 goes for Pierre Gasly, who obviously couldn't just couldn't manage to replicate his life from Q2, unfortunately. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Only, only P10 for Pierre, but still. Uh, top 10 position in Monaco for Alpine is a very good chance of points as obviously in the Grand Prix you know the results top 10 stay the same uh, we obviously had the big 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 incident a lap one between the Hasses and Perez yeah uh, I have no idea how Magnussen not get penalty points for that but I guess they want to keep him there uh, obviously I don't really feel like it was purely on Magnussen obviously Perez had some uh, some fault in his own in it in the incident and unfortunately Hulkenberg was the only one who had like no fall on his own and was shred DNFing uh, in the like first three turns because of his teammate and Perez who obviously it's 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 his fault that he qualified next to Magnuson so um uh, yeah ultimately his fault that he's he caused the team like three millions in damage. Uh yeah. Not very good for a Red Bull there in terms of their development. Obviously, more exciting for the fans, but I still feel like Red Bull will uh, eventually get the title this year. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry again, I'm I'm still recovering uh, from a sickness and I also got allergies, so that's not the greatest combination. Um, yep. Yeah. In terms of the podium, obviously Charles uh, with a great drive to remain P1, but there wasn't really no. Well, there was no uh, attempt to overtake him apart from those restarts, but Oscar never came anywhere near uh, overtaking, actually overtaking Charles. So, yeah, Oscar P2, great drive for him as he's it is his second time in Monaco, I think, as well. So, great job from Oscar. Uh, meeting Lando for the entire weekend, pretty much. Uh, P3 for Carlos, uh, another great podium, although it was uh, kind of undeserved considering the mistake he had just before. Well, just after the incident, obviously, uh, and actually, it was before the incident because uh, the red flag should have came in earlier, and that's why uh, they were just reversed into the starting order for from the for the qualifying. And Carlos got back to P three with the with a repaired car, so he could manage to get a podium despite being well well out of the points after the incident on lap one, which got obviously uh, red flagged. Uh, another notable, notable mention is the contact between the Alpines. Obviously, I when I saw it live, I was like, "What the hell are you doing? Like, it, why are the two Alpines always in each other?" And it was just so so extremely unnecessary for walk on there. Obviously, uh, I have no idea what goes on in his head, what he's trying to do. If he's trying to secure content and has maybe he's trying to like, yeah, uh, uh, it's gonna just tell has to he's gonna be the minus and replacement or whatever i have no idea why did he do that obviously uh with the team threatening him to be benched for canada or stuff like that so obviously they must have talked about these incidents beforehand that they, they can't happen and Ocon did it anyway and just refused to obey team orders and just try to launch out the inside of pierre gasly and in a corner that's not really good for overtaking considering there's like no space on the outside so that move was never going to work out never so yeah uh very stupid for Makon and he got what he deserved uh dnf so yeah that's it for for the lap one incidents obviously we got the restart and just the most, one of the most boring world priests ever in probably my life that i watched live obviously there uh, Grand Prix Live, the French Grand Prix in 2019, and I was live. And yeah, no, I watched a lot of boring Grand Prix, but this one was just, yeah, uh, extremely boring. Despite having no rebels in the podium, it was, yes, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, this is not the greatest one. Uh, yeah, um, I'll adjust the points so we can move from that, obviously. Uh, I think. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh i think i got no points and neither did each acting qualifying so that's no points there grand prix itself 
Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, science before we're going to be fun or something. Uh, I think, uh, no, I'm a point in the ground brain and as well. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of zeros there. The least impressive team. I think this is uh, pretty, pretty simple for both of us. We got a point. I mean, this was the worst weekend has could have had considering they had legit had pace during the weekend. They showed that they could get into Q3, but in Q2, they just lost the pace. And ultimately, they got go to school fight, start from the, from the back, both of them, and just ended up in this. And then both TNF on lap one, straight from a stupid uh, attempt from Magnuson, and ended up costing both both their cars, obviously, in damage repairs. It's a lot of cost for a team that they just, yeah, then it's gonna it's gonna make them struggle for for the rest of the season, obviously, with development, the cost cap and stuff. Yeah, so very, very bad weekend for Haas. Let's see, least impressive driver. I don't think it's all compared. There are a lot of uh, better examples of the least impressive driver. And Alonso. Alonso uh, is a good shout. I'm going to lie. I'm going to try to think of a driver who had the worst weekend, obviously. Uh, Perez, Ocon, who maybe, maybe Joe had a very, very unimpressive weekend. Sergeant is always being sergeant so that's more like a super uh, impressive magnuson we kind of expect him to do magnuson things so yeah perez i think he won and crash in lap one i think perez gets it for his weekend but alonso obviously the condition of the least impressive driver but he got p11 uh in the end thought he was in the in p10 so he didn't push and maybe could have challenged gasly for for p10 but we, we we'll never know uh aston Luke very, very slow this weekend, as well as Alonso. Obviously, out in Q1 is not the greatest look, considering you're getting out qualified by Lance Stroll. Uh, so yeah, that's not the greatest thing ever. Uh, but yeah, there are less, there are, there are drivers less impressive than, than Alonso, or like more, more towards uh, unimpressive or like impressive in the bad way, should I say. So yeah, uh, no points from us there. Uh, most impressive team to Mercedes was on a very good pace up until well Q3 when they just couldn't couldn't compete with McLaren and Ferraris for uh, for the top four spots. Obviously Russell was extremely close to getting a podium with the qualifying. It was like half a tenth down on P3 or something like that. So yeah, uh, missed opportunity there, missed points for me, but unfortunately that's just what what it is. Um, Tor Russell was an the most impressive either. Uh, most impressive driver, Russell had a good weekend as well as Sedona, but both of them were outshined by different drivers. Namely, I would say, obviously, Albon had a P9 of first points finish for Williams, obviously, Charles with with the victory in his own Grand Prix. Immense pressure on him, there must have been. And obviously, Oscar Piastri is a good shot as well. Uh, apart from that, yeah, it's not really much to say. I'm not many other drivers to say. Obviously, Yuki and Russell had good weekends, but we can't expect them to have good weekends based on this how the season went. Mostly both, uh, well, beating their teammates so far. Uh, it's not quite convincingly uh, beating Ricardo, uh, Russell, uh, beating Hamilton consistently, but not by a huge margin. As Lewis is still a very, very good driver. Uh, actual predictions. I had I had two plus red flags during the poll. There were no red flags as far as I remember. And the standing restart, which was true for for Ajax, so he gets a point here. So he gains he gains one point on me. I think that's enough for for it to be equal after this uh, this Grand Prix. So yeah, two to one from Monaco. Uh, I'll just add this. So we add. All right, so this is how it is. There are equal points of 34 points. Both of us equal after the first eight races. It's very, very exciting. Obviously, we're both trying to beat each other. <laughs> That's uh, kind of our uh, uh, fun thing. But yeah, uh, obviously, it's a lot of fun as well during this. And yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the video and enjoyed our content, please make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below. 
what you want to see from us moving forward. And until next time, see ya.